Welcome to our third hour. It's, it's been extra. Thank you so much for staying with us. I'm Anne Kiguta. We're covering politics uh, like no one else. And let's start uh, by taking you to Mombasa, where Senator Hassan Omar is on his uh, citizen manif uh, manifesto, launching it at this hour. Let's listen in. Who takes keen interest will be able to be a governor. Why? Because you will have seen, you will have known, uh, this is how you develop a manifesto. Then, immediately I get into government, I will call you to help me write that first budget. Katika kileki manifesto tuwa kwa hichi hapa, tuwa kwa katika budget. Hichi hapa, and then we say, these are our priorities year one. Through public participation, these are our priorities year two. By the time we finish, everybody will be our manifesto, budget, and governance expert. That is exactly what citizen participation was about. So you, nobody knows better than any other. Even if, I, if I'm seeking to be the governor of Mombasa, I'm not the best among you. There are those who are better. But I think I'm the best. That one I know. But in, in the, among people of Mombasa, what is their value? Will a moja look one among the village? Yule mwingine sijui aji anafungua na CFS, si ndio? Na at least ushaba labda nikifungua kibenzi. So eh, mimi ndio na mshauri ndio atawa governor wa Central Bank, sio governor wa Mombasa. Ndio. Kwa hivyo ukiangalia what experience, what values do they bring on board? Zero. That's why Right, we apologize uh, for that technical difficulty, but nonetheless, you are listening to Senator Hassan Omar uh, in Mombasa launching a citizen uh, manifesto, uh, poking holes at uh, incumbent uh, Governor Ali Hassan Joho's track record, in particular um, earlier on castigating him um, regarding the demolition of a school there, and, and a prominent school there, and saying that these are some of the things that tell you the heart um, of, of leaders, um, and also saying in that statement that, you know, if he was elected, the first thing that he would do when he gets into office would be to go back to the people and ask them um, what it is they would want in their budget as he draws it up, saying he does not have a monopoly, if you like, uh, uh, on intellect in running of county matters, should he be given the chance. I'll come back to my panel this hour. Let me start with you, uh, Dr. Makodingo. What do you believe um, the, uh, the stakes are in this Mombasa gubernatorial race, which has been heated for many reasons, um, not just uh, because really the senator is now uh, you know, the governor's job. In fact, perhaps I would be the last ember to stoke this fire. We've seen the tremendous amount of trouble that Ali Hassan Joho uh, has been in and is still sort of wiggling his way out of. What makes the stake so high in Mombasa and what are Senator uh, Omar's chances in this race? Uh, let, let me start by saying both, both Senator Omar and, and Hassan Joho are known to me. I think Hassan is uh, a smart, articulate uh, young man who given different circumstances would have had a pretty good chance at uh, at uh, dislodging Joe. However, I think he's been uh, handed a really bad hand, uh, mostly by Marwa over the, over, the, over the years, and now it doesn't help that uh, Asan Joe is seen to be fought uh, by the national government uh, over his degree and many other things. Mombasa is one of those counties where the governor is going to be re-elected not because he's done something or because is, uh, is popular, the people love him, but because we have helped him over the years become sort of a martyr, so to speak, so that the conversation about Mombasa isn't going to be much, isn't going to be about what he has achieved over the last four years, but about who is it that is fighting and why is it they're fighting him. I, I think Mombasa is, is a vital uh, county for, for this country, probably only second to Nairobi, and more importantly because of the port that it has, the tourism potential, the amount of money that it brings to this country, I would have wished that the conversation about Mombasa would have been making it cleaner, making it mm. better for the for, for Nainchi, making it more attractive for tourists so that we can get more money. But it isn't about that. And, and it well, it's been, been about yeah. drug abuse. 
in the county. Yeah, and 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 still control of drug abuse is a county function. Yeah, in the constitution in schedule four. And I don't think the county government has done much. I w I would be hard pressed honestly to point at one thing that the county government has done that makes them deserve another term. Unfortunately, I don't think that is going to be the key consideration in terms of uh, the election going forward, unless, of course, something drastically happens to us and Joe and the case that was filed by some Nairobi resident goes through and is stopped from, from running. Right. I, I don't think it's going to count. Let me come to Lotte. You know, as a politician, is uh, would you agree that with uh, Dr. Makodimgo to the extent that uh, Hassan Joho has been made um, a martyr and that this works for him? Is is all news good news when it comes to coverage um, of politicians? Uh, well, I think uh, first of all, listening to uh, Senator Omar, I actually see a politician always uh, uh, trying to outwit uh, Joho by derogatory remarks, trying to talk about uh, what Joe ought to have done or what Joe have not done. I think uh, one of the first things that I'll really say is that Joho is more popular, that is without mincing my words, in the cost, on the basis that he is the deputy party leader to ODM, which is more popular than Wiper in cost. Two, I think Joho stands a better chance on the basis that he is actually now considered a martyr fighting for the rights of the cost. Uh, I, probably whether that is true or not, I cannot be able to say it because I know the media has also played a big role in terms of bringing Joe to be seen as a matter for the cost. Now they have actually baptized him or they've given him the name Sultan. Uh, I don't know what that means, but I think <laughs> that, is, that is love of the people of the cost to him. Uh, I will advise Senator Omar to remain in the senatorial position if he wants to remain in politics. One, because when uh, the constitution was promulgated in 2012, uh, Joho chose to be governor. Uh, um, Omar chose to be senator. The first thing that the Kosteans are going to ask themselves, what has happened that now Asan think he can come back and dislodge Joho from his position? That is true. The second one, and I think the strong <coughs> one, is that Joho has actually built an empire of leadership around himself. And uh, that is all about what a governor can be able to do. And the third and the fourth is that Joho is actually trying to sell himself as a future presidential candidate for 2022. Based on that, the people, of course, want to have a presidency. And so they will really go back and vote for Joho. If this is based also on the opinion poll that came recently. Joho was really beating the closest rival by big, big margin. And so I'll actually advise uh, Omar to remain in the Senate and uh, do and fight for the people of course from the Senate, otherwise then he is going to be defeated terribly come the 8th of August this year by Joho, who actually is being built by uh, the media and also being by the fact that he is uh, portraying himself as a martyr fighting for the people of the cost. Sandra, what do you think of uh, Senator Omar's chances and, and, and his, um, his bid? Mm. I tend to agree with uh, my colleagues that uh, he's going to have a very hard time uh, trying to dissuade uh, the voters. And uh, as uh, Dr. Ari and uh, Moshimi have just mentioned, uh, Joho has already built uh, and created an image of himself as uh, the coast leader. And uh, for Hassan, it's going to be an, an uphill task. However, again, it all depends on what he's bringing to the table uh, in terms of what are the, uh, what, 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 di what different agenda does he have from, uh, from Joho that could perhaps dissuade the coastal people. And also, just uh, looking at it from the aspect that uh, there's popularity and then there's voting at the same time. And uh, from what we've seen in the media, despite uh, Joho's popularity, there are certain areas, there are certain uh, enclaves or constituencies where he's not exactly popular, like we saw in Peketoni where he went and uh, there was a lot of Ulabalu as per his, uh, his presence there. So that is one of the things that could work for him. And uh, secondly is um, Looking at the issues that uh, the coastal region is uh, suffering from, we have uh, terrorism, we have uh, drug, uh, drug abuse, uh, we have uh, youth unemployment, uh, low levels of education, and I think uh, trying to move the constituencies uh, based on this, uh, based on these factors, could also be something that could help uh, an aspirant uh, to fight the, the incumbent. So it all depends on uh, what Hassan is bringing to the table and the strategy is going to use between now and the next election process. So it's still going to be a hard process, but well, politics is a 
Hard game. Hard game. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hold that thought. I want to take you uh, now to the Nyai National Stadium where uh, all ODM aspirants uh, converged uh, this morning. Our reporter Sam Gituku is standing by and joins us now with details of that meeting. Sam. Right, good morning to you. And as you said, the ODM aspirants are here. What you understand is that the interesting numbers that are here out of the 17 parliamentary seats in, in Nairobi County, the ODM already has about 35 aspirants who are eyeing those seats. But of course, you understand that uh, for the Westlands parliamentary seat, there will be no nominations because the current member of parliament uh, by the name Tim Wanyonyi will be going for it on a direct ticket because there were no other people who were interested in clinching that ticket. But also, looking at the woman representative seat, there are some three aspirants who are going for that ODM ticket. Uh, for the Senate seat, we understand that uh, there will be no opposition. There's only one candidate who has expressed interest to go for that seat on an ODM ticket. Uh, his name is uh, Chapia Chapia. We, that's what the, the name that we've gotten so far. But, but then again, there's also the seat of the governor, which uh, is being currently held by an ODM governor in the name of Dr. Evans Kidero, so that also will not be going for nominations because already he, he has received a direct uh, nomination ticket. But also very interesting is the member of county assembly's seats, which are about 85 in the, in, in the, in the county. Already the opposition is holding about 43 seats, uh, sharing between ODM and the Oipo party. We understand that uh, ODM got about 40, between 41 and 42 seats uh, for the MCS, but now this time round, and there are some 600 aspirants who are looking for the ODM ticket. So how the 600 people will be fighting for the 85 slots uh, because the ODM party intends to clinch about 65, that's the information that we have, and also for the parliamentary seats, out of the 17, they are hoping to clinch about 13, but currently uh, the ODM party holds about 8 seats, but uh, they are opponents who are the National Alliance, but currently the Jubilee party, they have about 9 seats. So the ODM party is trying to uh, come together and, and discuss how they are going to approach the nominations, the party primaries, which are scheduled for the 25th of this month. But what a better way than to hear from the governor himself who uh, got a direct nomination from the party of ODM, maybe may come closer to citizen extra. And first of all, you're saying that you're hoping to clinch 13 seats for the ODM party. How exactly do you intend to do so, bearing in mind that you only have 8 out of the 17? Uh, NASA has got a uh, majority of the registered voters and by voter registration uh, we think ODM as a member of NASA with other NASA affiliates we should uh, uh, get um, a convincing majority much more than we got uh, the, the, the last time so we are talking of between 12 and 13 seats um, for MCAs, uh, we, the last time, uh, court got 43, and this, there are some seats which we lost, which we really shouldn't have lost because we divided the votes. And as a NASA family, we are addressing that, and we will certainly get um, a, a convincing majority, a little bit over 50 seats rather than the kind of hung assembly like we had um, uh, the last time. We have about 600 uh, people who are vying. Uh, we have uh, three women reps uh, vying. We have absolutely no doubt that we're gonna, uh, we are gonna win it. And for the Senate, which doesn't seem to have um, attracted as many people, we have one young man, Chapia Chapia, but obviously there'll be other candidates, um, other NAT NASA candidates uh, coming up and uh, it will be addressed then. The um, uh, Senate seat, I mean, uh, uh, the, the interest is lackluster, not only in Nairobi, but probably throughout the country because uh, uh, people associate with el elective seats with development. And since um, the members of parliament have CDF, uh, Senate didn't have any CDF. I think it's important that people understand what the role of Senate, Senate is. And that's the reason why a lot of senators have uh, run and going for governor seat, including Nairobi. That's an, interest, an interesting point to note, Governor, but uh, a any Governor, correct me if I'm wrong, any Governor would want to have a favorable county assembly, and here you're talking about the numbers currently at 43, and you want to raise it to about 60, 65. So how exactly do you intend to do this? Because you understand that it takes a lot of money to finance that campaign. Are you in any way intending to assist some of the MCAs? I think, Ogami, we have members, uh, mem the NASA members are very passionate. Uh, they want to see development, they want to see uh, Nairobi be what it needs to be. So they'll turn out and vote. They don't need to be convinced. It's their passion for the party and, na and uh, passion for a win. That's good. They will be coming out to vote, they'll be convinced. But then again, to oil the campaign, to run a campaign, 
you need resources, you need a strategy. And so from the ODM party and from the county, uh, county of Nairobi, what are the strategies that you're putting in place to ensure that this happens? Uh, one of the things is that we're going to ensure free and fair nominations so that there's no fallout on the 600 and on the 35. Um, and the people who probably won't have, um, uh, won't have got because only 85 people can, can uh, go to the main elections, the balance will um, uh, hold hands uh, with the people who won so that they, we campaign together so that we can uh, get our people to vote. Also the members of parliament who won't have achieved, who won't have achieved their ambition will not um, defect or go and run as independent candidates. They will hold hands uh, with uh, the party and ensure that we have a fairly successful, a very, very peaceful electioneering period that will lead to peaceful elections on the 8th of August, uh, so that our people... In the past, people ran away from Nairobi, more particularly people in the Nasa zones. They went to Western Kenya, fearing um, that there would be violence during election. We would like to assure everybody, both Jubilee and Nasa, that the elections are going to be... Uh, they will ensure that the elections are peaceful and they'll be free and fair and the will of the people will be reflected in the outcome. Finally, Governor, as we end this, the, you are under NASA and I had uh, the speaker saying that uh, you will consider having alliances so that, uh, for instance, if there is that seat that you are eyeing but uh, ANC seems to have a better, uh, an upper hand, you will be in a position to leave it to them. But what are the strategies to ensure that you have some joint tickets uh, in Nairobi because we have been told that uh, that was one of the considerations. How do you ensure that NASA clinches this not just through ODM? It's just the same same way that we have uh, uh, negotiations for the presidential position. Uh, it will be the same that we'll look at all the seats and uh, present the best people within the NASA family to clean the seats. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Governor. That has been Governor for Nairobi, Dr. Evans Kidero, for, of course, giving us some of, some of the insights that uh, the o Orange Democratic Movement Party will be uh, trying to employ to be in a position to achieve as much as seats as much seats as possible bearing in mind that uh, it is a political battle between uh, the NASA the National Super Alliance and of course on the other side Jubilee but of course getting to indicate some of the intricacies that they'll be looking at especially within the NASA family that has four uh, key parties in Nairobi so we'll be expecting to see how this pans out of course as I, as I said earlier the nominations are slated for the 25th of, of this month so we'll be expecting to see how this meeting goes and how the aspirants are moving on to approach that nomination exercise back to you and Thanks very much. Sam reporting for us in studio. Uh, Joy Mudiva joins us uh, this half hour. Uh, she's a governance expert. We're staying on with Dr. Washington Makudingo, Dr. Sam Kamau, and uh, Titus Luteo is the Deputy Governor for West Pokot. Um, let me begin with you, Joy, to the extent that, you know, NASA has many problems, um, but one of them is going to be um, when it comes to the nomination exercise and everybody decided to go it along, alone. Take the Nairobi example, one of the areas where every political party is looking to you know gain as many seats as possible how is this um, going to be a challenge for uh, the, the fabric of the coalition in keeping house together will they still have to reach some sort of negotiations by the time we get to the poll as to who will actually run that would be the best strategy for them because if you have uh, three NASA constituent parties that are fielding candidates against one Jubilee candidate and maybe one independent, you'd find that what would have been a consolidated NASA vote will be split amongst the three of them. So I think the nominations, it makes sense for them to go it alone because of course they are a coalition, they are not one united party like Jubilee is. But a clever strategy for them would be once the nominations are done, for them to also have localized sit-down sessions and discover who amongst us is the strongest candidate. Can we coalesce around this candidate so that they are able to consolidate their position even when it comes to the floor of the House? Because one of the biggest criticisms of this current parliament is that the tyranny of numbers, they've had a difficult time getting anything through and have had to resort to all manner of theatrics to try and disrupt parliament sometimes because they did not have enough numbers to marshal what they needed to do. So this might be the opportunity for them to say, okay, look, let us rally around this one person, but in terms of nominations, to risk a fallout would be to try and put them together. So, so that there's no fallout, let everybody do their own nominations, but post-nominations, in some places I'm sure we will see 
people stepping down in favor of other NASA candidates. Dr. Kama, how likely do you see that is? Because certainly that is what uh, common sense would dictate, but uh, obviously in politics that goes out the window. Uh, so uh, how likely do you think that perhaps the egos also that surround political contests uh, such as this will have to climb down um, for NASA to look at it more strategically? As Joey is saying, long term, you want to have as many people um, from the opposition of, or, or even government perhaps if they form government in the house so that you have the strength of numbers <coughs> to be able to push through agenda? I think uh, the conversation around joint nominations uh, has been there for a while but clearly they disagreed and we are not going to have any joint nominations. I highly doubt that after the individual parties do their nominations people will now come together and agree. Partly because every candidate who decides to run uh, believes that they can win and especially if they manage to capture uh, the ticket for their respective parties, it will be very hard for them to sacrifice. In any case, the negotiation uh, process where you try to weigh the strength is the same thing the principals are experiencing at the moment, each believing that they are best suited uh, to be at the head of the ticket. The same way will, uh, it will happen even across the other uh, political positions, even at the MCA level. It's very hard for people to agree. The other thing that we know is that there will definitely be a fallout after the nomination. There are people who will feel aggrieved. Definitely we know, and uh, like we said earlier, Political party nominations are characterized by chaos and a bit of confusion. And what we expect is that some people will be aggrieved. If the disputes are not resolved, we'll have some people running and as independent. Other people are maybe working to support other opponents or rivals. And the end process is that I do not see uh, a situation whereby <coughs> all the friendly parties, let's say on either side of the coalition, agreeing to field joint candidates for any particular position. The negotiations will be there, but I find it unlikely. All right. Um, hold the, that thought. Uh, we want to cross over to the Wiper Party uh, headquarters here in Nairobi where reporter Francis Kishuri is standing by um, the party uh, having a strategic meet this morning. Francis, fill us in. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anki Guta. Good morning. And uh, what your uh, panelists are discussing there uh, in the studio is exactly what's happening here at the Wiper House. Uh, party leader Kalonzo Musioka is meeting aspirants from Nairobi County, uh, Wiper candidates or Wiper aspirants in Nairobi County before the party holds nominations uh, right here in the capital city. And uh, the question that is uh, emerging is whether, uh, because a similar meeting is happening at uh, Nyao Stadium where uh, Governor Dr. Ivan Skidero is meeting Nairobi aspirants on an ODM ticket, the ultimate question is whether they were, there will be joint nominations after the uh, respective political parties in the National Spire Alliance have conducted their individual nominations. And from what I can be able to eavesdrop and listen to what uh, the aspirants there are saying, uh, each of them is saying they are confident that they are able to deliver uh, the respective seats they will be contesting for uh, in the August general election. And uh, this is now one of the major headaches for the National Super Alliance. Remember in 2013, the coalition lost some strategic seats in Nairobi uh, because they uh, fielded multiple candidates uh, in the city. For example, uh, look at what happened in uh, Makadara constituency, for example. Uh, the winning candidate there uh, won by a thousand votes, yet a wiper had a candidate, uh, ODM had a candidate and now the TNA candidate and uh, this was just part of the seats that uh, the coalition lost in Nairobi and so basically they're trying to mend that uh, contest or, or that challenge in 2013 but the ultimate question is whether after the respective party, uh, political parties have conducted their nominations they will be able now to agree to go forward and uh, field one candidate for each of the uh, elective seats that will be contested especially here in Nairobi bearing in mind that the number the, the, the game of numbers will be uh, will be uh, played out and uh, any candidate or any party or any coalition that sponsors more than one candidate uh, in a um contest as uh, hotly contested as, as, as one in Nairobi uh, they are likely to lose uh, that position and Thanks very much, uh, Francis. We're going to let you get back to that, but certainly a story that we're going to be watching um, uh, throughout this uh, morning as it unfolds at uh, the Wiper Party. Let me come to you, Dr. Makodingo, just to comment on what Francis has said. And, and Gashuri, stay with us. Stay with us. Uh, we, we don't want to lose you uh, in this. Uh, to, to what extent do, do you believe that there are already um, some predetermined or common sense areas where there will have to be um, this sort of consensus after party primaries? Uh, thank you, Anne. First, I think it will be important to declare, con to declare interest. Uh, I, have, I have a candidate running for senator, uh, the Honorable Sakaja, so obviously uh, right. I may not be... <laughs> and the yeah. party. Fine, nonetheless. Yes, yeah. Uh, that said, Nairobi, has, especially at the constituency level, there are four constituencies that 
that I think even Jubilee is looking at and uh, these include Ma Madare, Makadara, Embakasi East, uh, Langata. The four, those four Embakasi East, West, Langata, Madare and Makadara are constituencies that could go either way. Uh, NASA who then called lost Makadara because they fielded multiple candidates. They do the same, they still lose. Mm -hmm. Madare could switch to, to Jubilee because uh, K1 is, is, is quite popular. Uh, Jubilee is targeting Langata. Or the single Jubilee would want us to believe. <laughs> but Jubilee go ahead. <laughs> Jubilee is targeting Langata, where Nixon Korea is, is, a, is, a, is a fairly strong candidate. I think he would have won uh, last time if TNA had not fielded a candidate. He ran under URP. Uh, Embakasi East will probably go, West will probably retain. So these 13 constituencies for, for, for NASA, I don't see where they're coming from. I actually think they lose the majority in uh, Nairobi. The county assembly is a bit tricky. Uh, it's 43-42. It could go either way. I know Jubilee's, uh, the Jubilee candidates are doing everything they can to wrestle that out of, uh, out of the control of, of NASA because it is important who controls the county assembly. It, it, does, it has quite a substantial control over what happens in the city. At the governor's race, I think NASA has done well. ODM has done well to give Kidero a direct kit ticket. Hopefully, there will be no other candidate on their side. We would love to get a, 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 a NASA candidate on a wiper candidate running for Nairobi governor so that then Jubilee has a, a better chance. <laughs> uh, on the side of Jubilee, okay. I'm concerned. I'm concerned uh, at, at, the, at the differences between Peter Kenneth and, uh, and, and Mike Sonko. Uh, if you ask me statistically, Mike Sonko will be a better candidate in terms of uh, getting support. I think he's the only candidate that, uh, of the many candidates that Kidero fears. Uh, but, but wait, but before I let you uh, go any further, let me just uh, bring in uh, Gashuri who's listening in uh, on this conversation. You've heard, uh, of course, a very rosy picture that uh, Marco Dingo is trying to paint for his side. But nonetheless, as we talk about uh, NASA and its, its, its strategy and plotting, I'll, I'll ask you the same question I posed to him. Are there areas which certainly um, you think there will have to be consensus? Of course, uh, you, you've talked about consensus on various Nairobi seats, but tell us about the rest of the country. Uh, and Anita, uh, basically like you asked, is, it's, a common, it's a common sense question. Uh, a, 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 a scenario like that one, if you field multiple candidates, you're likely to lose that position. And uh, even when you look at Nairobi specifically, um, the last election in 2013, uh, then Cord lost some strategic positions or some strategic seats because they fielded more than one candidate. And so uh, I would imagine that probably they wouldn't want to repeat the mistake that they made in 2013 because repeating a mistake uh, is uh, basically, uh, you know, I, I don't know how I would rate it. But uh, they, their leaders have constantly been talking about it. I've heard uh, Honda Burai Laudinga speak about it, Kalonzo Musioka speak about it, that they would want uh, to control the city politics. And they would to control city politics is by ensuring that they get the maximum number of county assembly members, a maximum of count, uh, uh, parliamentary seats, uh, cleans the governorship and even the senate seat. So basically, there is no way you're going to claim all these positions if you field multiple candidates. But now, the challenge in fielding uh, multiple candidates comes as a result of disagreements on fielding joint candidates. And because uh, the NASA affiliate parties are already identifying the candidates for the respective positions, not only in Nairobi but across the country, the question is, will now after this go to another meeting or go to another phase where they are going to agree on specific areas, map them out, isolate them and say on this specific uh, area or in this specific constituency, let's field one joint candidate. Um, a similar situation is likely to play out in Kakamega, for example, if uh, uh, weekly Foparanya contest against uh, uh, Ford Kenya's uh, uh, Dr. Boni Halwale. The same thing is likely to happen in Mombasa, uh, where Hassan Omar of Waipa is facing off with uh, Hassan, uh, Hassan Joe of ODM, uh, the, uh, TN, uh, the Jubilee team of uh, Suleiman Shabal and, uh, and Nia Moboza is also contesting. So any mistake that any party makes in terms of fielding multiple candidates will definitely be an advantage to the opponent. You, to what extent is this question of um, you know, post-primary um, deals um, part of the larger migraine, if you like, that uh, NASA is having right now, leave alone you know, the question of the presidential uh, contender. Um, do you think this is also going to be one of those significant issues that principals will have to agree on soon and that could threaten um, the ties that bind? Fact that they it's not an easy thing, uh, uh, and bearing in mind be that be able it's, to it's, it's join 
denominations. If you find that the affiliate parties of uh, NASA are trying to bring individual candidates, by itself is a plus to Jubilee. On the basis that it shows the kind of confusion that is in uh, NASA party. And that's the reason why up to now we have not been able to get at the top level the principal person that will actually lead this party called NASA. The thing is replicating now in every county and actually it is replicating and especially on counties that are actually seen to be NASA stronghold. So the fallout is going to be there. And what I actually see is that the basis that the court rules that you can still party hope if there is going to be a negotiation, which I doubt is going to be, and one candidate is picked. The other one that is disgruntled will leave NASA altogether and go stand as an individual independent candidate or will also come and join Jubilee. So for me, I actually think the fact that they were not able to actually agree from the word go to have a single presidential candidate and now also to do a joint nomination is a plus to Jubilee and a very big minus to NASA. Join. And this is going to cost NASA a lot. Uh, Joy, would you, would you agree with that assessment? Is it as big, is it the second biggest migraine after the presidential um, uh, question and is it something that can actually uh, go as far as destabilizing or derailing uh, the NASA coalition? But this headache, I agree with him to an extent, but this headache is actually a headache on both sides of the divide. Now, the situation with NASA is that you have a coalition. So people are still distinct legal individuals, right. but are working under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. And so even if you're disgruntled in one party, you have a few other constituent parties that would still have you under the umbrella, but where you can move to. That to me is an advantage <coughs> to NASA because under Jubilee, if you're disgruntled, there's only one party, it's Jubilee. And if you cannot fit in that party, then you move out and then you become an independent, you run somewhere else. So in terms of fallout in this situation, I think Jubilee suffer a bigger risk. Because right. for them, anybody who's walking away, they're walking away from the entire process. Now that they have to look for some totally different outfit to run under. But with NASA, you may be disgruntled in, in ODM and find a house in court. We saw, like for example, Senator Hassan Omar. That's what happened with him. Last time he did not work in ODM and he simply moved to Wiper and he remained under the general umbrella. So I think it is a strength and a weakness, a headache most definitely, because the, the, there are places where you will have several NASA candidates and that will weaken the general NASA position. But in terms of the fallout, I think Jubilee have a bigger exposure than NASA does because for them, any fallout is an absolute break and that could further weaken the party. Uh, Gashuri, let me bring you in with the uh, final observations on that. Uh, and I'm, I'm also looking at the scenario where it's, it's, an, uh, it's a game of numbers basically because other than trying to clinch the presidency, you're also trying to clinch a majority of the National Assembly uh, seats, a majority of the Senate seats, and even a majority at the Council of Governors, and even at the County Assemblies. So any mistake that any political party makes, especially in these nominations, uh, could prove uh, injurious uh, as we move to the gender election. But of course, the ultimate question that we must ask, especially on the question of fielding joint uh, candidates, or fielding uh, joint ca candidates and avoiding the, the mistake of uh, fielding multiple candidates, is some of the people who are contesting, especially on WIPA, ODM, and even Jubilee, are the very same people who are pushing their party leaders to take certain positions, especially uh, on the whole coalition building uh, process. Some of the uh, quarrels that, for example, you've seen in uh, NASA are emanating from some uh, key supporters of the party leaders. And these are the very same people who are uh, relying on the charisma uh, on, on, and, the, and, the, and the ability to, to mobilize by their party leaders to contest for their positions. And so they would push their leaders to endorse them. And uh, in, in, the, in the likely or unlikely scenario where they are asked to step down in favor of another person, there's that feeling that why do you want so-and-so to contest and not me? Why do you think so-and-so is better than me? And so that friction uh, could prove injurious ultimately. And actually, and let's look out in the next few days or so, you will see some of the people who have already said they are going to contest, especially in the party nominations on party A, you will most likely see them either pulling out, withdrawing, and opting to vie as independent.
independent candidates, or even especially in the case of uh, NASA, moving out from their original parties, if you may like, and move to other parties within the same coalition, because there is a concern that the number of people who turn up for nominations is not actually the same number of people who turn up in the general election. And so probably you think, or the candidates would think, that they stand a better chance and will have more time to convince more people who will turn up to vote in the general election rather than the number of people who would participate in the nominations. So it's a very dicey situation, uh, situation for the political, political parties and even for the coalitions as we head closer and closer to the general election. But they will have to first uh, jump the hurdle of nominations. Thanks very much, Francis Gashuri, reporting uh, for us from the Wiper Party headquarters here in Nairobi. We'll catch up with him um, later, um, still on Citizen Extra, as it prepares to get into the Swahili edition. Um, that's in a couple more minutes. But let me come down now for a final round of comments as, as we wind up um, this uh, third hour of uh, the English broadcast of Citizen Extra. And I'll start with you, Dr. Kamau, who, frankly, you, your, your forecast has been gloomy and bleak on this whole nomination issue. Uh, you are expecting doom, gloom, fiasco, etc. A day before um, these polls um, take, you know, start to take place um, across the country. Um, how important is, you know, just ordinary folks' engagement, you know, supporters of these parties coming out and actually making their voice heard on the sort of um, aspirants that they want um, to be on the ballot paper come August? Well, uh, I have not necessarily taken a pessimistic uh, position uh, just for the sake, but it's observing from what has happened in the past. We have seen chaos every time we have the political party nominations. But uh, to speak to <coughs> the larger audience, basically what I said is that the people who will be available for the nomination process most likely are those who are either not working or engaged in any gainful uh, activity. But majority of the so-called middle class would prefer to watch uh, news in the evening and find out who has been given uh, the NASA, the ODM, the Jubilee uh, ticket. But I would urge them because this nomination process is very important in determining who will be our leaders because I think uh, we prefer taking to social media to complain and say that our leaders are bad and yet at the very important point of the nominations who are not involved, who are not engaged. I know there are some candidates who are busy uh, maybe posting online and are discussing their manifestos there. But the real task is getting people involved, getting people to go out and participate in the nominations. It will require some people to take ti some time off the work, off work and go and actually vote for their preferred candidates. What I would say is we know that there will be challenges, we know there will be complaints, we know there will be some expected fallout, but at the end of the day the candidates that we get out of these nominations process are the ones we'll have to consider during uh, the general elections. Thanks very much uh, for that, Makudingo. Uh, two things. One, political parties in Kenya have no capacity to conduct party primaries. I mean, I, I think it's a ridiculous... Including Jubilee? Including Jubilee. Oh. IBC spends, is going to spend, at the end of this exercise, 40 billion shillings. Political parties have less than 1% of that amount to conduct party primaries. They, they have no capacity. I think it's, 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 a, fact, it's, it's, a, it's a circus that we, we engage in every five years. Oh and yet, a lot of the seats, a majority of the seats are decided at the nomination level. Right. Yeah? Uh, and, and, and I think it is time we had a conversation about a better way of choosing candidates because in most of these constituencies around the country, the nomination is the general election. Right. And it is at that nomination that a lot of these processes, a lot of these things are messed up. Uh, a lot of candidates uh, in, in certain uh, parties, especially certain NASA associated parties, uh, buy these tickets. They are given direct nominations, so they are favored. You find someone as one on the ground, and then they come to Nairobi, and the ticket has been given to someone else, and there is very little that you can do. I think. As a country, we need to be more interested in what happens in nominations. It's unfortunate that barely 15-20% of the people actually participate in the nomination. And yet, by the time you're going to the general election, the decision has already been made for you on who will be elected in that seat. I mean, right. out of the 47 counties, 40 of them, the decision on who becomes governor will almost certainly be made in the next two weeks. After that, the next four months is just, you know, we are going through the motions. There are very few counties, Nairobi probably, uh, West Pokot where the deputy governor comes from is, 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 a, is in Mokino on a battleground, where there is a jubilee and can candidate. Mombasa probably has, has, has chances, and now we've seen Bomed has been brought back to the co contention. 
there are few fewer than 10 counties where a governor the decision on who becomes governor will be made before uh, will be made in August the rest of them are made now so as we sit here as we sit down especially the middle class and the upper class as people sit down and go through the motions waiting for August we need to know and we need to understand that the decision on who becomes your leader in August will be made before 26th of April right. and therefore we need to be involved in party affairs we need to be involved in nominations we need to be involved before the general election comes right let's say uh, well I think I'll agree with the uh, Daktari, but I want to say that uh, first of all, uh, Jubilee cannot be able to decide because it's never been tested at the national <coughs> uh, nominations. But we've tested Jubilee at county nominations. We actually saw that in Kericho and it was very perfectly done. So we cannot be able to cluster all parties that they cannot be able to carry their primary as well. I think Jubilee is going to prove you wrong. Jubilee is going to do their nominations very well. And that's the reason why Jubilee has got an entire structure, including a debt, a one single debt of when these primaries are going to be done. Two, I think in West Pakot is not going to be a real battleground that Takari is saying, because West Pakot is Jubilee County. Finally, I think we are also going into a period that is very interesting in our political timelines, between now to the 26th. And I expect to see a lot of fallouts from NASA. Why am I saying that? It's because they are filling various candidates, several candidates for the same party. But in Jubilee, we are only going to get one, and we're going to do our nomination. So the people who are going to be defeated, they will know that they have been defeated, and they will support the county, the, the, the party. But unfortunately for NASA, they're going to negotiate as to whether WIPA or, or NASA or UDF or whatever is going to take. So that negotiation will actually push people out of the entire thing because they will be disgruntled to a level where they will ask why is it that the other person is privat and not me and so for me I actually think in terms of fallout Jubilee will not suffer the fallout like the NASA will uh, and I think that is what I'm leaving to Kenyans and as we actually go into this kind of period I want to ask every Kenyan to sympathize with the situation that is happening in Baringo where military people are brutalizing women and children thank you Joy one big problem we have in Kenya is that we have made public uh, service a very lucrative business. And so you have people who are going into public service for the wrong reasons. Not all of them, but there are some who are going to it fiscally. They want the money, they want the prestige, they want the lifestyle that comes with being Amheshimiwa. Um, and that's why you find when it comes to nominations, it's very... It's very hardly contested. It's do or die. Because even if you're telling me that we are several NASA candidates, I should stand down for the others. When the guy goes through, he's not going to share his salary with me. He's not going to share the title of Meshmiwa with me. So why should I stand down for him? And this making public service lucrative is what has made our politics cutthroat. I support what Professor Manyora said around this table, I think it was on Sunday or some, someday, and he said, if we decided tomorrow that the MPs and the governors, no public servant is going to earn more than 100,000 and there will be no sitting allowances, then the true leaders in Kenya will emerge. For now, what we have is an industry, and that is why nominations are very do or die, because as uh, Makodingo has correctly pointed out, some places, the election ends after this week. We will know who the next uh, sitting MP, who the next MCA is, based on the outcome of the nominations. That is one. And secondly, when it comes to fallout, is something that I don't think either of the parties can run away from. But the misfortune also with fallout is that it confuses also the electorate. Because people have been working, they have been on the ground, they have been uh, building their profiles, and then when there is a, somebody is no longer on the ballot, that's when you, you found people, uh, it was a standing joke a while back, guys would go to the ballot box right. and they're still voting for more even if you're not running anymore. Right, right, you, right. So we need to come to a place where the, the populace is also educated, that just because somebody has been <coughs> in the limelight, if they are not on the ballot paper, then they are not contesting, so that people understand the entire process. More civic education is what we need as well. And I thank uh, my guests this hour and throughout the three hours um, for their views on Citizen X.